We've worked our whole lives, saved and invested, just to achieve financial freedom and been led to believe that as to painting the perfect financial picture, everyone's plan is the same. But the truth is no one is like you. And you deserve a financial strategy just as unique as you are. How do you navigate the complexities and volatility of a financial environment that just never sits still? And how do you find the guidance you need? Who do you trust with the wisdom to paint your financial masterpiece? You've arrived. This is the Wealth Council. And welcome to the Wealth Council. I'm Brad Johansson with independent advisors from around the country. Stuart Willis from Arizona, Colorado, Nevada. Tom Mosley out of California and Prasant Sampapathy. Gentlemen, I, I want to start out with, um, maybe I can coin it as the big secret. I'll take you back all the way to 2015. Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015, which changed Social Security forever. Tom, why is it the big secret? Well, they... Before 2015, there were a lot of levers you could pull. You could do different things. There was a file and suspend, and and you could you had restricted applications you could pull, and you could actually make lots of money. I, I mean, I've been in business where I have helped people make tens of thousands of dollars more money legally from the Social Security Administration just by pulling those levers. Well, what they did was they they pulled the cord on all those levers, and now they took pretty much gutted it. They took out the loopholes. And so now it's pretty much just when you turn it on, you can maximize it by waiting until you're 70. But the key word now is when is when are you going to optimize it for the best time for you? Because all of those little loopholes are gone. If this is the big secret, Stuart, and people are sitting and saying, OK, so this means that I do nothing with my Social Security, right? The government will tell me what to do? <laughs> well, here's here's the thing, and here's the problem. Look, I used to do big live workshops in Arizona, in, in Las Vegas, and we used to talk only about Social Security filing options, mm -hmm. right? They would be packed rooms. And look, I was wrong at the time because what I told the people was that, look, you are the biggest voting bloc in America, senior citizens. Nobody's going to touch your benefit. And I was wrong because they did it in 2015 and the media was silent. Nobody said anything about it. And, and more and more Social Security keeps getting taken away. And what really scares me is when Bernie Sanders and Lindsey Graham agree on something. And what they agree on is that higher income folks don't need Social Security as much. And we heard the same kind of talk back in 1983 and 1993 when they first allowed you to start taxing Social Security for the first time. So up to 85 percent of your benefit is taxable as ordinary income in many cases. In many cases, Prashant, are advisors being silent on this as well? I think so. I go back to what Tom said earlier. You know, there's this talk about trying to maximize your benefit, but I think you have to really optimize your benefit. And so when we look at coordinating your Social Security benefits, it's really a part of your overall income plan. You right. you know, there's no cookie cutter solution that is actually the right thing for every single person out there. Agreed. With all the tools available these days, you have to look at your entire income picture and figure out how coordinating your Social Security uh, could be the right thing for you. And you got to do it in a in a really unique way that is personalized to your situation. That's what optimization means to me. And I think yes, that's so much more and, important and, than maximizing. And not yeah. to pick on Tom here, but I, I think the use of those words really does matter. And look, we, because as advisors, we've always focused on Social Security and the idea of maximizing sounds best, but getting the most benefit over your lifetime may not be the right answer. It's about getting the benefit, A, when you need it most, and B, so that it, it helps you last through retirement to have an enjoyable retirement. And part of that is around doing the tax planning to make Social Security more efficient for you. Because remember when I said it's up to 85 percent taxable as ordinary income, those thresholds, those tax thresholds were set back up in 1983 and 1993 and have never been adjusted for inflation. So at the time, Bill Clinton, President Reagan before him, said that only the wealthy or the wealthy should be paying a bigger share of taxes on their Social Security. Yeah. And, but do you feel wealthy as a couple at $44,000 of provisional right. income? I right. don't know. It's, that, to me, doesn't sound wealthy. It's because it's never been adjusted for inflation. Those numbers have never changed. So, what, I mean, what, in 1993, what are we now, 30 years later? 30 years later, $44,000 is a different number today than it was then. So what am I supposed to do, Tom? Well, here's the danger. 
They changed it in 83, 84. They changed it in 93, 94. They changed it in 2015, the big secret that we're talking about. They're talking now about they may have to change it again in 10 years and only pay out 77 percent of the benefit. And across the country, Social Security, normally, depending on what survey you look at, is about 40 percent of the average American's income. So if they're going to change that again, and there was an article recently that said that's going to impact each individual $8,000 to $17,000 per year. If they're going to potentially change it again, because they've done it before, we all thought they wouldn't, what are you going to do about it in your plan? And you need to be working with an advisor to say, this is, this is how we're going to react to the changes of 2015, and this is how we're going to react to the taxes, but how are we going to react in our household if they do drop Social Security benefits to 77 percent of what it is now? Prashant, you said this is not a cookie-cutter thing. How do you hedge for the change right now in 2023? It's all about being able to map out kind of where your income is going to come from, but also looping in the other parts of the situation. Like, you can't ignore the tax consequences right. of Social Security uh, relative to the rest of your retirement income plan. And I think when we talk about not having a cookie-cutter plan, you have to loop in things like taxes, yeah. Medicare, and your investment portfolio as a part of your income plan as yeah. well. Yeah, and I think the solution here is, like Prashant said, like Tom says, to have a plan, have it now. Mm -hmm. And look, you have to deal with the facts that we know are true today. OK, what we know today is that we are in one of the most efficient tax windows in history right now. Mm -hmm. OK, and the Tax Cut and Jobs Act is going away at the end of 2025 if Congress doesn't act. So uh, one of the plans involves creating a real tax plan for yourself so that when you're pulling out your retirement funds, if you've done your job and put your money away into an IRA and a 401k, you did what you were told that maybe it makes sense to now have a plan to diffuse that tax time bomb over the next three years so that when you pull out your money, you're not having to do a tax calculation of, but for how much Social Security tax you have to pay now. Because mm -hmm. the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to die with all this money and never get to enjoy it. I'm right. telling you, it's, it's, it's one of the most miserable things where yeah. people realize what they sacrificed to get there, and now they can't even enjoy it because of their fear of paying the tax man. All right. You used the word optimization and maximization, Stuart, Tom, Prashant. Thank you so much. Have you utilized this? Call the number below or scan the QR code. And here's what we'll do. You'll receive the Wealth Council Social Security Maximization Report, and you can find plenty of opinions on the right time to file your Social Security. Truth is, your retirement plans aren't like anyone else's. So call the number below, scan the QR code, and receive your own Wealth Council Social Security Maximization Report right now. And the Wealth Council continues after this. Next, we analyze the value of a financial advisor. Do they really outperform the do-it-yourself investors on average? Stay tuned. Should you start taking your Social Security benefits at 62, at full retirement age of 66 or 67, or at age 70? The decisions you make on Social Security can affect how much you pay in taxes and how much you receive in your lifetime for you and possibly your spouse. Unfortunately, the Social Security office is not allowed to give you financial planning advice. Get your own tailored retirement income and Social Security report from the Wealth Council by scanning the QR code below. Income planning can be complex complex, but it doesn't have to be. Get your own personalized Social Security Maximization Report, your roadmap to financial independence from the Wealth Council. By answering just a few questions, we will generate your Social Security Report that is easy and secure, and we'll send you a tailored report that unveils your optimal Social Security strategy. Call the Wealth Council at 844-463-3466 or use the camera on your smartphone to scan the QR code below to receive your personalized Social Security Maximization Report from the Wealth Council. Welcome back to the Wealth Council. I'm Brad Johansson with Stuart Willis from uh, Nevada, Colorado, Arizona. Chance Robinson out of Orlando, Florida. Gentlemen, I want to talk about a Vanguard study that came out about financial advisors, which you may know something a little bit about. We gave a half million dollars self-managed. So a lot of do-it-yourselfers in this day and age, right? We have access to a lot of information. We know a lot more or we think we know a lot more. The Vanguard study, the, those who were do-it-yourselfers with half a million dollars were able to amass 
$1.69 million in 25 years. But if that half million went to an advisor, they were able to amass $3.4 million in 25 years. What's your take, Stuart, on, on that study and why it's so important to have an advisor instead of do it yourself? Well, it's an interesting study out of a great company that really was founded on the principle of don't hire an advisor, just let it ride on the indexes and you'll be fine, right? So Vanguard's a great company. I know we use some of their positions in some of the portfolios we use. Sure. Full disclosure, great company. Um, but it's an interesting position, okay? Very interesting position because I think oftentimes what people are, uh, what happens to them psychologically is they get misled into how good they really are at managing money. Because look, for the last decade, a blind chicken could have made money in the market. So it makes people feel like they understand what's really going on. And I think that there's a lot of flaws in there that can really expose you to some risk if you don't have somebody guiding you. Okay. Well, the, the, the bigger question here is understanding the, the need and the use for an advisor. Like we, we all understand like not all advice is created equally either. You know, you have certain advisors that really focus on that accumulation stage and then other advisors that focus on the preservation and distribution stage. So there's different aspects to the advice. I always tell people you have to look at it's not so much about what I can make in a year. More importantly, it's what can I keep in a year? I mean, if I lose 30 percent, right, it's going to take me a 43 percent return to turn around and make that back up. Yeah. Whereas when I'm in the situation that I need to keep what I got. Now we're talking about a whole different set of advice that needs to take place. All right, and do-it-yourselfers, here's, here's the biggest deterrent. This, according to an NAPA study, it says the biggest deterrent is cost. It costs me too much to go to advice. Why, why do you smile at that? Because <laughs> I, 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 I always like to uh, uh, I liken this to this. You'll go out to eat, right, and you'll tip the, the waiter 20% for bringing you your food back and forth from the kitchen to, the, to, the, to your table and, and, and your drinks. But the guy who's managing your retirement and your lifestyle and your savings, you, you know, you want to nickel and dime at 1%, 2%. Like, I am all for if you're paying somebody to lose money, absolutely. You don't Go need to do it. it. You can lose money for free, right? But if this guy is going to, you know, if he's going to charge me 2%, but he's outperforming every other advisor here by 30%, 40% a year, does it, does it warrant the 2%? Do you hear the same thing? Yeah, you know, I, th I think it's interesting. I think fees matter, and it's interesting. I mean, just remember, you know, a lot of these studies, people are fee very fee-conscious because that's what they're conditioned to think about. The concern I have is this, for, especially for the do-it-yourselfers. You know, we are in this really weird, divided world politically right now. P different people see the world differently. Yep. And look, most people, when they put together a portfolio – Obviously, they see the, the world through their own eyes. They can't see it through Chance's eyes or your eyes. They see it through their own. And we see the same thing with other financial advisors, where a lot of financial advisors will go to their client and they'll say, hey, you know what? I really like this stock or this stock or this fund. Let's go ahead and put your money in there. And people will put their entire life savings into the hands of one human being. And my question to you is this, guys. What if he's wrong? What if he gets it wrong? You're going to do that? Well, listen. I think the one thing I think is really important is to have an advisor that isn't a do-it-yourself for himself, but somebody that has access to, to multiple money managers, to not just have a diversification of your investments, but a diversification of perspectives, to have multiple points of view reflected in the same portfolio. So if one guy gets it wrong, it doesn't wipe out your whole life's work. I don't have a whole lot of time, but I want to get to this point because within this study, it says most people believe that only wealthy people need advisors. You smile again. Yeah. I mean, it. it's just one of those big misconceptions. Like to get to where I want to go, we are all playing this game of money. We've got to understand that there's different levels of advice that we can receive. It doesn't matter if I've got $10,000 or $10 million in the bank. If I want to grow and I want to preserve and, and, and there's certain things that I want to accomplish, uh, we're, we're going to work off of the same advice. This is the time where you need a plan and you need to develop a risk tolerance. Do you know what your risk tolerance is? It's so important. Your financial advisor's idea of risk, is it the same as yours? How do you know? Don't leave it up in the air. Find out where you stand to receive your personalized Wealth Council risk report. All you have to do is call the number below or click the QR code. 
Up next, a health event can devastate a retirement plan. Hear Prashant Sabapathy's cautionary tale and why planning for a health event is so crucial in retirement. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss this. Are you preparing to make your retirement funds work for you while not taking too much risk? While there is no substitute for sitting down with an independent financial advisor, why don't you learn the strategies of investing as well? Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now to learn about investment strategies that align with your goals. Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now. 844-463-3466. That's 844-463-3466. Welcome back to the Wealth Council. I'm Brad Johansson with an advisor spotlight. Prashant Savapathy out of Baltimore, Maryland joins us now. Nice to have you here. And I want to talk about something that's kind of personal to you because we talk in financial advising all the time about planning for the unexpected. You've had more unexpected than probably most people share. Yeah, sure has. Uh, back in 2015, Brad, my mom, 58 years old at the time, she was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. Wow. 58 years old, so young. And I'll tell you what, I'll never forget it. It was in the summertime of 2015 and we found out about the diagnosis and you go through the normal reaction of, oh my goodness, what's going on? But after a couple months, things really start to set in and, and the family starts to think about how are we gonna deal with this? How are we gonna deal with this both emotionally, but how are we gonna deal with this financially? If we need care, for mom and that turns into round the clock care, which is what it has become now. Yeah. Do we have enough money to do this? Uh, how do we come up? I remember dad saying, how do we come up with 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 bucks a month? And that's where I think the importance of doing some proactive planning on the front end is really beneficial. You, you said in the early stages, we're just trying to deal with this. And it, it took you a while to even have finances set in your mind about this is going to be a huge deal for us. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's a total emotional reaction at first, the, the, just the stress of it all. I think there's probably a little bit of denial there at first before no you even get to thinking about what the long-term effects of all this could be. Um, and so, yeah, it's a process. And, and I, I sat there thinking, I can't even imagine what it would be like if we didn't have a plan in place to deal with some of this stuff. Which is where many people are. Absolutely, and that's what we see in our practice all the time is people come in and because it's not exactly the most fun thing in the world to think about, people tend to ignore those types of things, dealing with long-term care, or dealing with catastrophic emergency or loss of life. And so as difficult as it is to, to talk about and to think about, those are the most important things, in my opinion, that you have to be proactive about planning for. Because people will panic and say, oh, no, I can't do anything. On top of your mother, you had more that came after 2015. We did. A couple, uh, couple years ago, my wife uh, was tested positive for the Huntington's disease gene, and that threw another kind of situation uh, at our family in terms of both long-term care planning, family planning, those types of things, genetic testing. So a lot going on there, but I just go back to how do you take that? How do you take it? Do you take it head on or do you be really passive about so it? So your advice for somebody would be what? Be proactive, have tough conversations with your loved ones, make sure that you're as prepared as possible. Uh, certainly the emotional preparedness is one thing, but if you can do anything financially, whether it's explore your options for long-term care, explore your options uh, for how to create more income in retirement so that you can support those type of catastrophic situations, that's what we have to do as difficult as it may be. It's surrounding yourself with good people and that includes good financial people as well. Prashant, thanks so much. Thanks, Brad. Wealth Council continues after this. When the Wealth Council returns, when your employer files for bankruptcy, what happens to your pension? Stay tuned. Are you preparing to make your retirement funds work for you while not taking too much risk? While there is no substitute for sitting down with an independent financial advisor, why don't you learn the strategies of investing as well? Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now to learn about investment strategies that align with your goals. Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now. 844-463-3466. That's 844-463-3466. 
Welcome back to the Wealth Council. I'm Brad Johansson with Independent Advisors Tom Mosley out of California, Brian Corenta out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Gentlemen, I want to talk pension health. I want to talk how it affects retirement. I want to talk about what we have seen in the recent news. We've talked about Yellow Corp and the shipping giant filing for bankruptcy and what that means for pension people both going into retirement and those already retired. But I want to cite something from the CEO of Grit Capital, most recently saying that bankruptcies in the U.S. rose by 30 plus percent over the past 12 months. We are already on track, and this is a quote, to double the mega bankruptcies compared to last year, citing Bed Bath & Beyond, Rite Aid, SVP Financial, all large companies seeking bankruptcy protection. Does it mean anything to people who are looking at pensions and how they go into retirement or already in retirement, Tom? I think it absolutely does because the pension has some protection from the government that, that you know, they're protected somewhat. But that company and the strength of that company that's funding into that pension, that's the major source and the only source of funding that pension. Those companies are the ones that have raised their hand. They said, we need to go into bankruptcy. But how many other companies are out there that are facing the economic environment that we're facing right now with the 15 or 16 percent run up on inflation that we've had in the past three years with the run up on interest rates, because a lot of companies leverage. Most companies leverage. That means they go to buy the borrow money so that they can continue to expand and to grow. And when those companies are going and they're getting that money at two and a half percent, it's one thing. But when they're getting that money at seven, seven and a half, eight percent, it's a whole nother thing to the bottom line. And that's why so many of these companies are raising their hands and we're yeah. in trouble. Well, and, and I will say this, this is why when you get your, when you look at your retirement plan from your employer, if you're, if you are getting a pension, a lot of people aren't anymore, but you may want to look to see if there's a lump sum option yeah, available, right. right? Because even t take folks that work for large companies, you know, like uh, U.S. Airways is a great example, right? Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation took over those pensions. Even folks that were retired that were already receiving their pensions saw reductions in their pensions. Imagine being retired and getting a check every single month and then getting a letter five, six years in retirement saying, we can no longer pay you what we promised to pay you. We can only give you 60 cents on the dollar or whatever they decide to do. Right. And this is why if you are one of those folks today that are able to have a pension, you may want to look to see if there's a lump sum option available and create your own private I pension. I wonder if all of this news is now creating a red flag for people to say, I probably need to take another look at what I've got right now. And maybe in that portfolio or plan list that I am right now, I may need to start looking at a plan, Tom. Well, you need to start looking for a plan. Brian talked about the lump sum option. That comes when you leave the company. And that lump sum option, you can stay with the pension. Usually, we'll just say right up front, usually that pension can pay you more right off the bat because they've had your money for years within that pension plan and it's grown and they're able to give you a higher monthly, smaller amount generally, a little bit more. But then a lot of people move that into a private pension or they use it to build a full retirement plan. They might not need all of the income they're getting from that pension they, the, and that, that payout that they're getting. So they take the lump sum and they carve out some of it to go into a private pension that's paying them the income they need. And they take the rest of it and do the things they need to do. So their options. Here's the biggest one, I, I think. If you are married or if you're single and you, you get it on just your life, if you're married and you get it on your wife and your spouse's life, and something happens to you two, three, or four months later, yeah. that money is gone. It's gone. It dies with you. And that's the thing. When you create your own private pension, right? Now, Explain the private pension. Okay, so the private pension, very simply, is an income annuity. That's all pensions are, the form of an annuity. Okay. Social Security is the form of an annuity. It's designed to pay you income for the rest of your life. But here's the difference. If you leave it with your company... You don't have control, just like Tom said, because even if you took a joint payout option, that would mean that both you and your spouse get it. But if both of you die, that pension dies with you. Whereas if uh. you take the lump sum and you create your own private pension, mm -hmm. not only will it be guaranteed for your life, but if you die, guaranteed for your spouse's life. And if your spouse dies, anything left in the account is paid to your beneficiaries. That doesn't happen when you leave it with a company. And when you leave it at a company, I always say, look, Folks, when they leave a job, typically will clean out their desk, right? Take their stapler, take their little sweater vest, 
but they leave their money there. Right. It makes no sense in most cases to leave your money with your corporation, mm -hmm. because a lot of times in, in if you build a really good financial plan, sometimes you can create a much better plan on your own and maintain control of your own money. Right. right. Control. That's the key issue. It is the key issue. And if you don't have control, it's time to take control. Call the number below, scan the QR code and you receive your own Wealth Council written financial plan. We're going to prepare a plan specific to your retirement needs. Leave no stone unturned in order to build a plan just for you. And to receive that Wealth Council written financial plan, all you have to do is call the number on your screen or scan the QR code right now. Are you preparing to make your retirement funds work for you while not taking too much risk? While there is no substitute for sitting down with an independent financial advisor, why don't you learn the strategies of investing as well? Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now to learn about investment strategies that align with your goals. Call for your free retirement investing guide from the Wealth Council right now. 844-463-3466. That's 844-463-3466. We talked about the big secret, the value of a personal advisor, and what you need to know about your pension and planning for the unexpected. The Wealth Council is here to answer all of your financial questions as you try to paint your retirement masterpiece. Now, if you have a question or you need a second opinion, call now for an appointment and your personalized written financial plan. We're here to help. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Brad Johansson, and this is The Wealth Council. Any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately. And batteries never need charging. This is Life Alert. I'm calling for help right now. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free brochure, call 1-800-808-1940. 1-800-808-1940. With any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately. And batteries never need charging. This is Life Alert. I'm calling for help right now. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free brochure, call 1-800-808-1940. 1-800-808-1940.